What it is, everybody, and thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Today, we're going to talk about the Grimes case here behind me. Let's get right to it about commuting and does it make a good commuter? Well, we got both of them. As I released the review between the three and 6,000 miles, they are all good. So, that kind of follows with it into a little bit of a series. Are they a good commuter? Absolutely. Well, but to an extent, as I have another bike here to the left of me, and which is where you're going to kind of step things up if this actually comes up into play. So putting around town, going back and forth to work if you don't have a lot of highway traffic, is this a good commuter? Absolutely, yes. And I'm going to switch it on over here to this one. And when you do have that highway traffic, that's exactly when you're going to have to use this one. However, back to this one because that's what this vlog is about. Are these good commuters? And again, yes, they are. And I'm going to switch sceneries here so you don't have to just sit here and stare at them all the time. Nice little cruise down Ocean Avenue. So, the Groms. What's their biggest downfall? Well, their top speed because they only do 60, 65 miles per hour. Again, we're not buying them, obviously, to, you know, outrun Johnny Law or anything like that. Absolutely not. No. You buy them for fun. The best things, obviously, about them are that they are fun, and I would probably have to say the gas mileage and cost, because they are cheap. Now, you can buy other things, such as scooters and things like that, that are actually cheaper, that go faster. Yes, I know. But they don't look as cool. And in my opinion, they don't provide you the same fun factor. But commuting back and forth, are they good commuters? Absolutely. I think as long as you're within, you know, 20 miles or so one way within your house, it works perfectly fine. Even if you have to get to some highway speeds or anything like that, it's okay because it'll do 60, 65, you know, revved out, no problem. And it'll... It'll, it'll take it, no problem. Now, if you have to do 30 miles or 40 miles or anything like that, well, then again, the Hyper Motard is also probably not going to be your, your best bet here either because you sit so straight up, and this bike is just not all that great, of course, as on the highway because I told you, you sit so high up, it, you're, you're, you're like a brick going, going through the wind. Well, the grime doesn't necessarily go fast enough to make the wind, obviously, so much of a pain in the ass. But, again, back to the grime, its biggest downfall, I think, in factory condition is, is, is the seat. Solely because after about 45 minutes or so of sitting on that thing, just the seat is just really not all that comfortable. It could use a little bit more padding. Now, they do make aftermarket seats, even gel seats that are like only a buck fifty. That aren't really that bad. And you got to think about it. If you're going to sit on this thing, you know, four or five days a week and commute and then go have fun on it and then fart around and do wheelies and all that jazz like you see me do all the time, the seat is definitely worth the investment. Just like any other things that you put on here like the exhaust or some extra lights or handlebars or whatever it may be to, to help you out with whatever it is that you're trying to particularly do with your grom mine i always like to stunt it a little bit and jump on the clutch so i did the clutch springs and it worked out great now if you don't plan on doing any wheelies and stuff like that and jackrabbit starts then the stock clutch is fine but a little bit too soft to really like jump and nail on it so but just driving around commuting back and forth to work it's freaking fantastic uh, you can go 120 miles or so easy, no problem, on a gallon of gas. And it's just fun. Again, it's something about that. Uh, here, here's another thing, and it does it for me. It's something about you always being at full throttle. And it doesn't have to, you, you don't even have to be going fast. But the fact that you didn't start at full throttle, obviously, but now you're just gunning it, you know just cruising down as fast as you can something about that feeling i'm going as fast as i can and it's like some like psychological thing in your head that just knows that you're just hauling ass but even though you ain't hauling ass you're trying to haul ass and then the pipe you know just blaring making all that kinds of noise it's just fun 
that's all it is but the bike does it make a good commuter absolutely yes the one thing i say that you do have to pay attention to is where you park it because theft of these things from what you hear read and see on the forums talk to other people in ground groups it is kind of on the high side so you eat, when you're commuting back and forth to work like let's say you work at like a mall yeah, well, parking it in like a common parking lot or something like that's probably not going to be your your safest bet. Look, they only weigh 200 pounds, so it's not really hard for someone to pick them up and just load them in the back of their pickup truck to be an asshole and a dick about it because they're too cheap and they're an asshole and they want they got to steal your shit. Absolutely. So, but if you work maybe in a gated community or where you got security at your job, or you can park it in a parking garage next to a camera, then it all makes a little bit more sense for you to commute with it. But just that's something to really keep in mind as opposed to a larger or bigger motorcycle because they are heavy. Now, crotch rockets and stuff also get stolen just as often, but the heavier and bigger bikes, let's say like a Goldwing, well, let's all face it, ain't nobody picking that big shit up. That's like stealing a car. And, but the Harleys that are seven, 800 pounds or even 600s like in the Sportsters, that's three times the weight of a Grom and, you know, two guys, they got to be two pretty big and strong guys to pick that thing up. So, again, back to here on the Grom, does it make a good commuter? Absolutely, yes. Is it comfortable? Yes, it's absolutely comfortable. The handlebar, handlebar position is great. Riding at night is really good. The headlights on the 2017 and up model, the ones that come with the LED headlights, work flawlessly at night. Just obviously make sure you got them aimed right. Turn signals are great. Brake lights are great. Even if you get into a pinch where you're at like a party or something and you got to give a friend or someone a ride home, it works in a pinch too. So overall, I'd say it's really good and check one out because I love this thing. And I just figured I'd give you all a little quick review. Is it a great commuter? My absolute answer is 100% yes, but just with limited resources because you can't go super far or excuse me, you're not going to really want to go super far on it because it is limited here on top speed. But... That's going to conclude it here for today's video. Again, I hope you all like what you saw. Make sure you're commuting on your ground, putting some miles on it if you have one. If you're thinking about getting one, go ride one, go get one. You're going to love it. And that's going to conclude it. Don't forget to check me out here on Instagram at The Speed Bug. Same name here as YouTube. And we will see you all for another episode here on The Speed Bug channel. Deuces.